Welcome to Procrastinate Making with the Prof, the show with amateur cooks and professional professors. Dr. Wojtek, if you'd like to introduce yourself, what you do, and what you're making. Uh, yeah, so my name is Bradley Wojtek. I'm a faculty member in cognitive science in the Hui Jiolu Data Science Institute. And uh, today I am going to make, uh, let's see, it's going to be Eggs Benedict with a lime brown butter hollandaise, which is something I've made successfully three times and unsuccessfully once. So we'll see how it goes. You say you've only made this recipe three times? Well, I've made Eggs Benedict a number of times, but the um, brown butter lime version is a little bit harder. So the everything about Eggs Benedict is relatively easy, um, except for making the hollandaise. Uh, so hollandaise is uh, mostly melted butter and egg yolk, and it comes together. And I'm not going to try and all of them brown this and like talk about the science because I'm, I'm not a chemist. Uh, but uh, it's really easy to get it wrong. So if you heat the egg up too quickly as you're adding in the melted butter, uh, the egg will cook and the whole thing breaks and kind of becomes this like gross curd. sort of curd, curdled mess, exactly. Um, and so the trick with the uh, variant with limes is there's also acidity to the limes. Uh, and so uh, the acidity of the limes uh, interacts with the butter a little bit to make it even trickier. So the temperature has to be just right. So uh, Usually the trick for doing this is low heat and using a double boiler here. So this is water in this pan and then a glass bowl here. And I'm gonna use this to uh, combine the egg yolk with the uh, butter. So first thing I have to do is melt the butter uh, and I'm gonna use a stick and a half of butter and we're gonna melt it and brown it. a little bit about the research that you do at UCSD? Research? We're here to cook. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so then what are some of your favorite things to cook? I'm just kidding. So uh, my favorite things to cook, um, I really like doing grilled cheeses, actually. Uh, but uh, that's mostly for my daughter. She's six years old and she's hiding right now, but she may very well come out here to hang out on camera. As far as the research goes, uh, I run a research lab working on uh, neuroscience. So we have this combination of neuroscience and data science uh, where we use huge amounts of data that mostly other research groups have collected. Uh, and we combine all of these different data sets to try and understand how do different parts of the brain communicate with each other. Uh, I'm gonna pause really quickly and let you know that what's happening right now is I'm melting the brother, butter. So it's a stick and a half, like I said, and normally uh, for the hollandaise, you just melt the butter and leave it at that. For this, because it's a brown butter, I'm going to let it melt and then start to cook. And it's going to start turning brown and getting really fragrant and sort of nutty smelling. Uh, and that's what combines really nicely with the lime in this. Uh, but it's tricky to not overcook. So I'm going to make sure the temperature is low enough that it doesn't burn. It just needs to brown. Everything else is pretty straightforward. So once this is all done, if I don't break the hollandaise, then we're going to uh, just chop the tomato and uh, avocado, uh, poach the eggs, which is what this here is for. Uh, and then we have uh, some bacon that we can cook uh, at this time as well. Could you tell us about the Data Science Institute that you helped found? Yeah, the Haligiolu Data Science Institute. Uh, so that started, it's, we had our second anniversary on March 1st, so it's a little over two years ago now. Um, and the Data Science Institute grew out of uh, a collaboration or uh, like group of faculty from a number of different departments. So we had initially computer science, uh, math and cognitive science programs got together. Um, and uh, that sort of working group of data science related people uh, really got started after uh, I started teaching an undergraduate data science class, COGS 9, Introduction to Data Science, here back in 2014 when I first started here as a professor. Um, and that was initially 24 under, uh, undergrads who took that class or so. Uh, and those group of undergrads uh, got together and we created the Data Science Student Society, so the DS3. Uh, and uh, 
once that class started exploding from 24 to, I think it was like 80 to 250 to 500 undergrads uh, every quarter now taking COGS 9. Um, once that's really started taking off, we started getting uh, these groups of professors together from math, COGS, sci, and computer science to start an uh, actual major. Uh, so I'm going to turn down the heat. You can see it smoking. I'm going to pause really quick. Uh, and you can see here the sort of little white bits in here, the butter fats. Uh, and then those are where they're going to start to cook and brown. I think those are actually the uh, proteins. This is the proteins? Oh, okay. Never mind. The fat, the fat is the melted. Yeah, that makes sense. I know nothing about the chemistry here. So don't listen to anything I'm saying on terms of what's actually happening. <laughs> or really anything else, I don't know. So as I'm watching this carefully, uh, the group of professors, uh, we basically got to sit down and say, what would be a really great curriculum for under undergraduates to take uh, that brings together all these different ways of thinking about uh, science in the most data science-y kind of way. Um, so I have a very strong biased opinion about data science. I think data science is uh, something very different from just computer science plus math, um, which is one of the reasons why cognitive science, my home department, is one of the founding departments. Uh, and a big part of what makes data science different is uh, the ability to combine massive amounts of publicly available data uh, in novel and interesting ways. So the example I like to use is uh, imagine you're a data scientist at Facebook and you want to try and figure out, um, you know, how do we increase the probability that people are going to click this ad? Uh, you know, and it could be any any sort of social networking company, right? uh, any ad-based uh, company. And what do you have to go off of in order to make that decision as a data scientist? You might have access to, um, for the people who are interacting with that ad, their demographic information, uh, you might be able to take some of the pictures that they have. If you go on Facebook or uh, I think Instagram does it too, every photo that you upload gets sort of passed through some computer vision algorithms to try and figure out what is in that photo. And so if you go into Facebook, for example, and right click on a photo and you, you can select inspect, uh, it'll actually tell you the text what's in that. So it'll say like maybe if it's, you know, two people sitting outside, a uh, sunny day, and it'll name the people if they can try and figure out who they are. And so you've got the photos that have been uh, computer vision translated into text. You might have access to like status updates. You might have access to who their friends are. Uh, and so most people think about networks on that sense of uh, social networks is like, you know, your friends with people that you have, you know, clicked follow on or something like that. But even if you don't follow somebody on Instagram or Facebook, but you constantly are viewing them, uh, those data get recorded too. So if you have uh, Instagram and you're scrolling through somebody's feed, you don't actually follow them as you're scrolling through that or on Facebook if you scroll through your news feed. If you stop scrolling and look at what they're, uh, look at what they posted without ever touching anything and interacting with it, that's called the dwell time. They record how many milliseconds you, you stayed on their image. Uh, so they know that even if you don't follow somebody explicitly, you're very interested in what they post and what they do. Uh, and so uh, be, be warned of that, I guess. Um, and so how do you take all of these different kinds of data, photos that people upload, demographic information, uh, the things that they write, the text that they have, those are all different kinds of data. How do you combine all those data into one number, which is the probability that this person's going to click on that ad? And that turned out to be a very, very tricky and interesting hard problem uh, to do. Uh, and I think that's where like the super special, what makes data science different uh, aspect is. Um, so the butter is just starting to brown. You can start to see changing the color a little bit, the foam here. So can you tell us a little bit about how you got to being a professor at UCSD and starting an entirely new major? Like from, from um, like your, your experience in college moving, moving onward. <laughs> That's a long path. Uh, Okay, so how did I get to becoming a professor uh, at UCSD and starting, uh, helping start a major? Um, so when I was an undergraduate uh, in the late 90s, early 2000s, uh, I was initially a physics major. Uh, and I, as a first year undergraduate, I uh, got uh, a job as a research assistant in a lab that does uh, ultra low temperature physics, making Bose-Einstein condensates, which is where you use lasers to, it doesn't matter because I didn't know what was happening. 
Um, and I was terrible at that job, it turned out. So I had no idea what I was doing as an undergraduate in that. Uh, and uh, I knew I wanted to be a physicist for you know, a decade at least prior to starting my undergraduate. And I just had a really hard time uh, with all my physics classes. And uh, like, it was sort of a difficult time because oh, here, it's browning. Uh, couldn't really figure out what it is that I wanted to be doing. And the one thing I thought I wanted to do, uh, I wasn't as good at as I wanted to be. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely detecting a hint of nuttiness. <laughs> um, and so I actually, when I went to register for classes my third year, my junior year of undergrad, uh, I was informed that I couldn't register because uh, I had been on academic probation for too long and I'd been kicked out. And so I had a sort of, uh oh, what do I do now kind of moment. Um, and I begged and pleaded with the undergrad uh, advisor uh, to give me another shot, one more semester to get my grades back up. Uh, that was pretty life-changing. She, she really wanted to bat for me. Um, oh, okay, I'm gonna turn the heat off now. The butter is brown pretty nicely. I'm gonna come back to that in a minute. I've got the double boiler here. Uh, I'm gonna leave you hanging on the story about getting kicked out of undergrad. Uh, I'm gonna go back to this. I'm gonna start cooking the egg yolks. Okay, so the double boiler is boiling. I am going to now separate the uh, egg yolks because we're just going to be using the egg yolks here. Uh, and so I'm going to add the egg yolks to this. This glass bowl is pretty hot. Uh, I am going to rinse off my rubber spatula. And I am going to be very slowly Separating the yolk from the white. I'm gonna hold this to the side actually because I'm gonna come back. I don't wanna put them in quite yet. Sorry, everybody. This is such an intense process. <laughs> oh no, we're doing it live. <laughs> come on out, oh no, there we go. Okay. Now I'm gonna go to stirring this really quickly and make sure it doesn't cook. Because if it starts to cook, like the egg yolk actually starts to cook like you would with like scrambled eggs, mm -hmm. uh, then uh, it breaks the sauce, uh, meaning that it gets that very clumpy sort of texture to it. Um, and it's a little too hot. It might have started, we'll see if this works. I'm not sure. We'll take a chance with it. So I'm going to add the lime juice and keep whisking. And then we're going to add the brown butter very, very slowly and hopefully the hollandaise holds up. So I'm just going to come over here and cut two limes really quick. Use this handy juicer. That's a lot of information. I don't know. You see, got a little tiny bits of lumps in here. I'm not sure. You might be able to save it. It is possible, with a great amount of effort and skill that I don't have, to rescue a broken, uh, broken sauce. Okay, now I am going to take all of this brown butter that I just made and I'm going to pour it into a bowl so I can then start to slowly incorporate it into that hollandaise mixture, including getting uh, off the bottom of the pan here all of these nice sort of browned butter salads. So the reason I'm not sort of pouring here is I want to add just a little tiny bit at a time uh, and make sure it doesn't break. No, I don't know. Not looking great. I'm holding All my right. breath. I wasn't realizing it. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another egg yolk to it and see if that pulls it back. 
because the double boiler might have still gotten too hot. We have enough, everything else, butter and stuff. How often do you normally cook? Um, we cook a fair amount in our house. So I cook at least once a week, uh, but usually more like twice a week for dinner. And if I'm not cooking directly, I am often the sous chef, the helper. Um, Okay, this is okay, this is okay. I don't wanna to get too excited here, but this might work. Might need a little more lime. Uh-oh, getting pretty close. Maybe we have a little bit of lime juice again. Smells great. So when you and your family aren't cooking together, where do you like to go out to eat? My kids are not super keen on going out for food. My wife and I like to go out uh, together on dates uh, for dinners. Um, Ethiopian is one of our favorites. Uh, so there's a couple of Ethiopian restaurants in San Diego uh, that are fantastic. And uh, I have sort of this the joke about my food uh, likes, which you can maybe even see happening here, is like the more um, saucy and spicy it is, <laughs> the happier I am. So any sort of food style that is like curries and lots like very sauce heavy, uh, French food does it, uh, those tend to be my favorites. And this actually works, this isn't broken, uh, which is shocking and amazing. I don't know how it tastes yet, but it actually looks pretty good. What do you think? I don't know, do you have any sauce in there? Not yet. All right, I'm gonna give it a taste. Um, so, food-wise, yeah, it needs salt, <laughs> but it's really good. It actually works. That's amazing. Ooh. Anyway, going back to the food question, um, anything that is sauce-heavy, so Mexican foods, uh, uh, like I said, Thai food. Um, I'm staying over here now. I'm going to just transfer this out of the hot bowl. Ooh. 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 Lime and brown butter hollandaise. A little thick, but that's okay. I'm gonna go with it. I'm not gonna push my luck. It didn't break. So really all we need to chop right now are the tomatoes. And we have some avocado here prepped. I'm just gonna do that really quickly. So you take your knife, you stab it into the pit and you turn, and that pops the pit out really easily. So you get a clean avocado. And the knife is sharpened and prepped. And so my father actually is a cook uh, and a chef. Well, uh, and he currently works as a cook for a hospital in Arizona. And so growing up, I saw him do a lot of cooking. And so that's where I picked up some of my, like not super comfortable in the kitchen, but I'm not terribly uncomfortable in the kitchen. Uh, and so just growing up watching him prep meals, uh, since he was the sort of primary cook in the house, that's where I picked up most of those. So we'll separate that. Whatever tomatoes prepped and ready. And we're waiting for the water to boil for that. We're gonna keep one of these lime halves set aside. And so what I'm actually gonna do is we're gonna take a tiny little zester and we're going to get some lime zest to sprinkle on top of this so it has a lot of flavor and it's really good for uh like seasoning when you're done so this thing is like just a tiny little you can see in here the little lime skin just kind of building up as you zest so What's your favorite food to eat? Uh, going back to the question earlier, it would be uh, Ethiopian food, I think is still our favorite food to go uh, out for dinner. Uh, I don't know if you've ever had Ethiopian food. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's usually no utensils. So it's um, usually plated on injara, which is kind of this like sourdough pancake 
almost. Uh, and it's a big platter of it. Uh, it usually comes on a giant platter like this and then has various different kinds of vegetarian meat dishes uh, that are uh, cooked in a lot of different kinds of sauces and they place those around uh, on the injara platter. And it's served as like a, you know, a family style meal. They give a big basket of the injara bread and everybody kind of just like use the bread as the utensil to pick up the food. Uh, and uh, my wife and I in undergrad lived in LA right down the street from Little Ethiopia uh, off of Fairfax. And we used to go down to Ethiopian restaurants there all the time. And when I graduated from undergrad, uh, my parents came into town to visit. And we took my parents and my wife's parents to this Ethiopian restaurant. And neither of them had ever been to Ethiopian food before. And it was like, Oh yeah, it was the first time our parents had met each other after we'd been dating for like a year. We took them to this place where it was like this small, dark, uh, like kind of intimate table restaurants and the food you just eat by sticking the bread into a pile of sauce and eating it. It was such a, like, I can't believe we did that. It was such a strange way to introduce our parents to each other. Uh, but they claim to this day that they enjoyed the process. So I don't know. Um, so that's my favorite food, both flavor wise uh, the spices that they use are fantastic. Uh, it's really spicy. I'm a, I have a very high uh, threshold for spice, so I've got a couple of. Uh, so this is one of my favorites. This is uh, the Tabasco Family Reserve. Uh, so this is going to go on top of the uh, uh, egg Benedict when we're done. There's also this, which is uh, can I do product placement here? Uh, so this is uh, sriracha plus Tabasco. So. I go through a bottle of sriracha like every two weeks uh, and a bottle of this probably every two weeks also. Uh, and so this is just a Tabasco flavored sriracha. So um, actually, hey, we can even, like, I can show you my pantry really quick. Um, we're gonna go in here into my pantry. I've got a stash of bottles of Tabasco sriracha. It's like one, two. Oh, man. oh I'm only down to two bottles right now. Uh oh, and I have no more sriracha. Oh man, <laughs> we have that must tons be Tons of hot sauces and spicy. So Tabasco, uh, tahini, this Palo Alto firefighters pepper sauce, which is really good. Uh, so I go through a ton of this kind of stuff. Oh yeah, please, thank you. Um, okay, so I'm, I'm actually gonna show, my wife here is now prepping the bacon for me. <laughs> so this is Jessica and she's offered to help while I was showing off the hot sauce selection in the pantry. <laughs> so the water here for the uh, poached eggs is just about to boil. Uh, I've got a little bit of uh, white vinegar here uh, and so that helps with the eggs poaching it keeps them separated when you crack the egg into the hot water the boiling water uh, the if you do multiple eggs they can kind of uh, congeal together a little bit and so the white vinegar helps them uh, keep separated and so we're just doing a couple of pieces of bacon uh, this is almost ready to go um, we're going to start toasting these in a minute the bacon that'll be pretty quick um, we've got the holiday sauce, we've got the tomato, we've got the avocado, we've got the lime zest, we've got pepper and salt, uh, and we are just about ready, thank you, uh, to poach the eggs. So, great. The English muffins, the homemade English muffins? No. No, online. That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you did. We should be using that. So you had mentioned that you have a love of spicy food. What's the hottest thing you have ever eaten? The hottest thing I ever ate? So, <laughs> um, so the day that my daughter, who is now six, was born, uh, she was born very late at night, early in the morning. And uh, by, I don't know, it was like seven o'clock or so in the morning, uh, my wife was pretty hungry. I was pretty hungry. So I went down to the hospital cafeteria uh, and to get like yogurt or whatever it is that they had uh, that early in the morning. And there is this crew of people that were, uh, this is up in the Bay Area, uh, that were like chocolatiers that had set up a booth at the hospital cafeteria uh, to sell chocolate covered stuff. Um, this is like two days before um, Valentine's Day. So they have like chocolate everything, chocolate dipped strawberries, chocolate dipped raspberries, that kind of stuff. Uh, and I haven't slept, this is like our second child, it was an intense, you know, day, uh, obviously more so for my wife, but still pretty uh, exhausting night for me. And I go down there and this crew that was setting up this table, uh, I saw this, I'm like, that sounds delicious. And then I saw they had chocolate covered habaneros. 
uh, <laughs> and I was like, that looks awesome. And so I asked the guy, I'm like, does anybody ever buy these things? And like, I've got, uh, you know, like a drink in my hand and I'm like, you know, exhausted and sleep uh, deprived. And he's like, no, nobody ever actually buys these things. Uh, and I was like, well, you know, have you tried them? And the guy's like, no, no, I won't try them. They're too hot. And I was like, well, you know, I, well, I got to try, right? And so I was like, okay, I'll take one. And the guy's like, really? I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm gladly I'll have one. And he's like, okay, I'll give it to you for free uh, if you eat it right here. <laughs> I was like, okay, sounds delightful. And so I popped the whole thing in my mouth, this like whole habanero pepper uh, covered in chocolate, popped into my mouth. And these two guys are watching me as they're continuing to like a crap. And my whole face is on fire at this point. I am dying. And I'm like, uh oh, I got to play it cool around these guys though, because they're like, oh, uh, you know, nobody ever has tried these things before. And so I'm like, trying my best as I don't know like my face is sweating to just go pick up the yogurt that I'd promised my wife for breakfast <laughs> as I'm walking through and I can't even think straight uh while I'm trying to do this and uh habanero peppers aren't even that hot but uh for whatever reason some combination of that pepper plus sleep deprived and everything else just absolutely destroyed me uh, and I managed to hold it together enough to uh I think money was transferred I don't think I stole the food that I walked out of there for, uh uh, with but uh, that was probably the hottest thing so um, I stopped short of eating whole habanero peppers that's apparently my, my threshold uh, I can eat uh, jalapeno and things like that I haven't tried uh, anything hotter like I haven't tried the ghost peppers or like California reapers or any of those uh, kinds of ridiculous things but uh, that experience with a whole habanero pepper uh, was enough for me so I think that was the spiciest thing I've eaten <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to drop in four eggs now. I'm just going to crack them and drop them in. Is it too hot? You're the expert on poaching eggs. What do you recommend? Oh, you don't think it's hot enough? Okay. Well, it was boiling, but... Turn Turned it down. down. Can you hold this? Yeah. Okay. That's good. So, uh, for poaching eggs, apparently the temperature has to be just right. Uh, I'm going to pretend like I knew that going ahead, uh, ahead of time here. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. You think it's okay? Sure. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Okay. So while I'm doing this, we can probably go back to the conversation we started with like an hour ago, which is, uh, how did I survive getting kicked out of undergrad? If you want me to finish that story, I'm, I'm happy to. Yeah. Um, so I, like I said, I begged and pleaded my way back in. I've got to keep these separated, by the way, uh, trying to keep them from congealing together just far enough away. Uh, and the eggs are a little cold too, because they came out of the fridge. With, you know, I tried to get them up to room temperature, but we don't want them to cool the water down too much uh, if we're worried about the temperature. So uh, I got one semester to get my grades back up. And I, uh, as an undergrad, during my time uh, there, uh, I had taken on a whim with a friend an introduction to psychology class uh, my second year, and I thought that was pretty fun. And there were no majors that I could switch to uh, at the beginning of my third year, where I could still finish in four years. But I, because uh, it was a private university, I went to University of Southern California, and I was paying my own way through uh, with scholarships uh, and work study. Um, but because I had lost uh, I've been kicked out of university because of academic probation. I also lost all my scholarships. And so I couldn't afford, I could barely afford four years, let alone uh, staying around for an extra year. And one of the only majors that I could switch to and still complete it on time because of the GE requirements that I had already taken care of was psychology. Um, and I'd really enjoyed the intro to psych class. And so that first semester back, uh, I took, um, I think it was like 19 or 20 units. Uh, pretty much all psych classes and finished my psych degree uh, almost entirely in that one quarter back uh, semester back and uh, really enjoyed social psychology. Um, when should I pull these out? Turn it up a little. Okay. I'm going to grab a plate. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I know that part. I'm doing a separating thing first. Fishnet spatula. Yeah. Trying to separate them from the bottom because my wife says that's what I should do and I'm going to trust her. <laughs> oh. 
Careful. Oh no, that one popped. Oh, travesty. It's okay. Disaster. <laughs> nobody, nobody can see. Nobody can see. It's fine. It's just egg drop soup. We can cut this out. <laughs> oh god. Everybody's gonna know I'm a terrible I'm a sham. It's all been a sham. The whole it's okay. Time. It's a show about amateur cooks. Are you calling me an amateur? Oh. oh. <laughs> so don't listen to anything I'm saying on terms of what's actually happening. <laughs> or really anything else, I don't know. Oh, I don't know if those are quite toasty either. Um, I really sort of fell in love with psychology and I thought for a while that I would end up going into um, therapy. Uh, I should, probably should go into therapy, but what I meant was like I, should, I would go and become a therapist. Um, but uh, as a fallback plan, a bunch of my friends in undergrad were computer science majors. Uh, and so as a fallback plan, uh, I took a couple of programming classes, Introduction to C um, and an Introduction to AI Programming in Lisp, I think it was, and a Java programming class. Uh, because I figured if nothing else, I'll at least have a couple of programming skills uh, that might help me get a job after I graduate. Um, and this is like the height of the dot-com uh, era. And uh, I found out that I actually really kind of enjoyed programming also. And in order to... Uh, pay my way through undergrad, one of the things I had agreed to uh, was uh, a work study. Uh, and I got lucky and found a lab uh, that was a neuroscience lab studying the biosocial basis of violence. Um, and that lab gave me a job as an undergraduate research RA. Should I take these out? Yeah. yeah. Wiggle them to see if they are wiggly. <laughs> what, what level of wiggliness am I looking for? Done this? How do you how do you how do you tell? Can you I can narrate that? What's done? They look you. wiggly. They look wiggly to me. Yeah, yeah. yeah that looks done. pretty good. That's They're good. Overdone? overdone? Oh, okay. Again, travesty. Oh god. Put it in a nice bag. Hey, Carl, um, you put your push eggs in ice baths? Yeah. Stop it do you really? Me. To keep them from cooking? Yeah. I've never done that for poached eggs. I've done that for, uh, you're saying put the eggs in an ice bath to keep them from overcooking. I've never done that for poached eggs. I've done that for um, like four minute eggs before. Um, but that's a pretty good idea. <laughs> but it's too late now because yeah. you can't do that. <laughs> My stories are way too long. I'm like a rambly professor. It's like the worst kind of professor there is. It's all professors. Um, it's all professors? <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, when I started in this lab, I was supposed to, the first job that they'd given me was to, um, they'd collected all these data over the years that they'd stored as text files, it was like thousands of these text files, and they wanted me to open each text file, copy the data that was in the text file out of it, and paste it into an Excel spreadsheet. And uh, they gave me like two weeks or something to do this. Um, and, you know, I, uh, I guess I'm like, work smarter, not harder. I thought that was ridiculous. And so I wrote a, a C program to open up each text file and scrape the data out of it. And I came back like the next day or something, two days later, and I was like, here you go, I'm done. And it was like I had done a magic trick. They're like, what, how could you possibly be done? Uh, and I was like, well, I, here, I wrote some code to do it. And they're like, what? what do you mean you wrote some code to do it? Uh, and that's when I realized that like even my rudimentary programming skills uh, it, were pretty valuable potentially in another domain like psychology. And so that led me down this path of uh, the intersection of like programming and math with psychology, which ultimately led me to neuroscience and computational neuroscience. Um, and so when I applied for grad schools, uh, well, I didn't know I wanted to go to grad school, uh, but I liked the research. And so I worked at the lab. I got a job after undergrad at UCLA uh, working a PET scanner, um, which is a, a brain scanner where, that works by injecting radiation into people. Um, radioactive sugar in this case, uh, which is taken up by different parts of the brain. And you can see which parts of the brain take up the sugar when they're quote unquote working harder. Um, and uh, I, I just kind of fell in love more and more with research working at that lab at UCLA with uh, Professor E.B. London and applied for grad school and didn't get in anywhere. I applied to UCSD CogSci actually also and didn't get in for PhD program here, which I think is pretty funny. Um, a lot of the professors are still here, so I sort of like tease them about that. Uh, but um, I got an interview only at one place that I applied to and that was Berkeley. 
uh, and uh, so I got into UC Berkeley for the neuroscience PhD program, uh, which was pretty new at the time. I think we were only like the second year of neuroscience PhD students at Berkeley. Um, and totally fell in love with computational neuroscience. Uh, and yeah, that's how I ended up here. And we are just about done. The bacon is close. The English muffin is toasted. The hollandaise sauce is not broken still. Uh, the eggs are perfectly poached and not at all overcooked. <laughs> and uh, we've got the avocado, we've got the tomato, we've got a little bit of Tabasco sauce, we've got the wine zest, we're good. No, no, we don't need plates. We're just gonna eat it like an animal. Like this animal right here. That's Ada. <laughs> Because Ada's the best. She's the most interesting. Okay, and she will, she will, she will very much like bacon. Let's see if we can give her a little piece of school. Okay, dance. Oh, good job, good job. <laughs> All right, you have any more questions? <laughs> I should plate it probably, right? Um, while you're plating, uh, what are some books or movies that you'd recommend during quarantine? Books or movies that I'd recommend during quarantine. Well, I mean, I really enjoy comedy movies right now. <laughs> uh, I haven't seen any that are great uh, that I can remember off the top of my head. Have you watched anything that was like really funny and really good? Have you seen uh, Shaun of the Dead? Oh yeah, Shaun of the Dead is fantastic. Yeah. Uh, Shaun of the Dead is the best zombie movie uh, that has been made. and. Uh, this is coming from Zodi that wrote a book about zombies. Um, but uh, I know I'm supposed to say the original Night of the Living Dead in like 1964 is probably the best. Uh, but I would say that Shaun of the Dead is not only really, really funny, uh, but it's also uh, shows a lot of love for the genre. And you haven't seen it yet. We have to, you, I don't know if you'd like that yet. Oh, goodbye. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, I think it's fantastic. So do you want, you want bacon too? Um, they have nothing but love for the zombie genre. Uh, everything about it is just perfectly detailed, very funny, and uh, it is the best. Uh, close second in zombie movies is 28 Days Later, I think, which is also really well done. Uh, and let's see, what other movies? We watched The Joker uh, recently, which was like just a little too much it was like uh too serious like i didn't quite know where their what their goal of that movie was um how about you have you watched anything do you have any recommendations <laughs> oh no look at how perfectly done these are <laughs> have you heard of train to busan what is it uh train to busan it's also no. a zombie Oh, there's a zombie movie I haven't, I haven't even heard of. It's called Train to the Sun? Busan. Uh, oh, Busan. Oh. oh. I it's on Netflix, I think. That. Yeah. Is it good? Yeah. yeah. And if you want to show of a similar nature, uh, Kingdom is also pretty good. It's on Netflix. It's also about zombies. This Kingdom. Oh, really? Huh. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like um, I'm not allowed to say uh, this either, but I actually didn't really like the Walking Dead TV show that much, which yeah. is like crazy apparently as a zombie person. It did um, But the comic, the comic was great. I really enjoyed the comic for uh, uh, for Walking Dead. Okay, so we're just about done. A little bit of salt. A little bit of pepper. Would you like Tabasco? Yes. A dash of Tabasco and a big heavy scooping of Tabasco. Oh. <laughs> With this on the side. All right. So before we end this, do you have any like, words of advice for undergrads, uh, just in general? Yeah, when things get really hard, that's going to happen, and don't let it get to you too much. 
Um, speaking from somebody who got kicked out of undergrad, uh, you know, it's not all over. You can still figure out a way forward. You just kind of got to find somebody who's willing to help. And UCSD has tons of those people. Um, like just for, like just, I feel super lucky in CogSci and in data science because the undergrad advisors uh, in CogSci, uh, Tom Maxwell is absolutely amazing. And she cares so much about the students over in uh, data science, uh, Margaret Zulke uh, and Megan Kelleher, same sort of situation. They care so much about the undergrads. Uh, so if you're struggling, you're having a hard time, go to office hours for your professors and TAs. I never did that. I like never went to office hours uh, because I was always embarrassed by not knowing, which now in retrospect seems ridiculous. That's what office hours are for. Uh, and if you're having a hard time or something's come up, go talk to your undergrad advisors too. Uh, like they want to see you succeed. That's what they're here for. So that's my advice. Um, and then eat well. Don't skip on, don't, don't waste time on bad food. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we don't want to keep you too long from your food. So thank you so much for participating and thank you. making food with us. Thank you so Point much. Yourself. For Point it yourself. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Jessica. My, my arms are really <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody. Have a good one. Bye. Perfect. <laughs> thank you. you. my dog. My dog is terrified now. It's okay. I'm so sorry. Oh no. <laughs> hey, what happened to the cat earlier? What's that? What happened to the cat earlier? Oh, the cat? I don't know. Did the cats get locked in the bedroom? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. The cats got bored with us. <laughs> Videos like these are brought to you by UC San Diego and have been made possible from support by makers like you. Thank you. <laughs>